Teachers of Reddit, what is the most depressing thing a student has told you about their home life? I kept having this kid come and sleep in the first period. I mean, that's normal for high school. One day I made pancakes as a treat and the kid didn't sleep, they ended up staying up and ate six pancakes. Later, the kid told me they often don't eat breakfast because their parents don't buy food. When they have extra money, it goes to buying alcohol. After hearing that, I went and bought breakfast foods and left them out for anyone to take. The kid didn't sleep after that. Edit, I didn't think this would blow up. But I wanted to clarify, the parents didn't qualify for food stamps or any help because they made too much money. At least it looked like they did on paper but really they didn't. I lived in the Bay Area at the time and even though they made a lot, most of the money went to rent at living expenses. They also generally seemed to make bad choices, not judging them but it seemed kids came last often. I think one thing that came from the pandemic that is good is the free food that many schools are handing out. It's wonderful to see. In the past our district would still offer meals in the summer to any kid under 18 who showed up to summer school even if not attending. Continued, someone mentioned these parents should be judged. I agree they sound horrible. But one thing I keep in mind when working with kids is trauma is multi-generational. We don't know what impacted these parents to behave this way. Personally, my mother grew up very poor in an abusive home. Her parents had gone through the Holocaust and it really impacted them. They didn't know how to be parents and struggled with mental health issues in a time that didn't really provide support slash had negative stigma of mental health. So this trauma was passed on to my mom. My mom was a good mom but wasn't always there for us emotionally because of her own attachment style she developed from her parents. So the trauma was passed on to us. Now that I am a parent I have to work super hard not to pass on the negative things I learned from my parents but changing behavior can be hard. I am not making an excuse for this kid's parents. Something I learned while studying psychology, my BA is psychology, is trauma passes through generations. I had a teacher once say something I always keep in mind when working with students, kids can impact and change parents' behavior. Parents' behavior and personality can change because of the child as well. Not saying this kid lead the parents to drink but rather having a kid who has special needs, doesn't bond with you the way you wanted or doesn't behave how you expected them to can really impact you as a person. Edit 2. Yes I reported these parents. I called CPS on them several times. I reported this to school admin, I talked to the school psych about this, I gently talked to the parents about this as well. Judging a parent isn't helpful, but helping and educating a parent is what is needed. If the system fails we can only do so much. So if it takes spending $6 bucks on a bag of pancake mix every month I can do that. Sometimes we have to have short-term goals to meet before we can fix the long-term ones. So if just giving the kid food when hungry helps I will do it while we work on fixing the bigger issue. When I started to feed the kids breakfast I partly did it with this one kid in mind but I realized it wasn't just this kid who came to school hungry. Teens have sleeping issues and sometimes they don't get up early enough for breakfast. Some people can't sleep till 3 a.m., some kids have horrible anxiety and they are up all night and can't sleep, heck I bet a lot of those kids I worked with were simply not morning people and getting up to go to school sucked for them. I saw kids who came from good homes come to school hungry because something other than neglect caused it, though in this case it was neglect don't get me wrong. All I am saying is we can't judge a parent, we sometimes have to find a fast solution while fixing the bigger picture. His parents would only give him a pillow and blankets for his bed if he had all A's. I contacted the school counselor and it was true, along with the fact that all of the food was locked away and he was only given specific amounts per day. Per DCFS this was not considered abuse. I made a deal with him that as long as he was doing his best, his grade would never drop below an A. He teared up. I had a girl playing with something while sitting at the carpet. Rolling it back and forth and putting it in her mouth and taking it out and rolling it around again. I told her to give it to me when the other students started their independent work. She gave me this large green pill. At recess I ask her about it and she says her mom and dad give her and her siblings one of these every night to make them sleep. I take the pill to admin and tell them what she told me before searching Google images to find out what it could be. I find a short list and go back to admin, and I'm told it isn't my job to worry about that. I try several times that day to get answers and they say they think it's melatonin so stop overstepping my place. This girl and her siblings are in and out of foster care and come to school with no food and filthy clothes. She came to school in a sweatshirt covered in dried blood three days in a row. Her parents wouldn't even sign the papers to get the kids the free school lunches, I forged the mom's signature every month. I had a girl miss several lessons last term. I was concerned about her progress in class and followed up on the absences. Next time I saw her, 
We had a wee chat and she said she was really struggling with home stuff. The following day, she appeared very early with a letter and asked me to read it after she left. The letter stated that she was unable to tell her story out loud but she wanted me to know. Her story detailed a difficult home situation. I have redacted the details out of respect for the pupil as I had no idea this would become so popular and well read. It completely floored me. I had lessons starting in 15 minutes, but I couldn't stop crying. It felt awful that this strong, silent young girl could brave coming to class with the weight of this on her shoulders. So we worked out how to make school feel safer for her. She struggles to be around lots of people and near doorways without a trusted adult nearby. She's terrified that he appears in school to take her. So we spend our break and lunch in my class, playing games and watching silly videos on YouTube. If she has a bad day, I'll walk her to her bus. I make sure she's seated away from the door and nearby a friend or my desk. It's not much but every little bit helps her feel safer. Edit. Thank you so much for your kind words. A few commenters were concerned regarding her safety. To clarify, safeguarding pupils is a massive part of my job. The correct agencies were informed and she is currently getting counseling sessions to work through her situation. The police are informed and the entire school is doing the best it can to protect her. Hope you all have a lovely Halloween. Every week, I'd let students earn raffle tickets which would potentially allow them to choose a prize, such as bringing in a show and tell or picking a prize from my treasure chest. Anyways, one day, a student brings in her favorite doll. This leads all the girls to start talking about their favorite dolls. One student, privately tells me that she never had a doll before. This made sense because the child was homeless, wore the same dirty outfit nearly every day, often stole from teachers and classmates because she became adapted to survival of the fittest mode, and her parents were out of the picture. That night I went to Toys R Us right after school. The next week I made sure this girl won a prize and stocked my treasure chest with a brand new teacher and student Barbie set. Well, this child picked the Barbie right away. The most touching part about this story was when she asked if she could show and tell her new Barbie. I said sure. At the beginning of her show and tell she introduced the student Barbie as her name and the teacher Barbie as being my name. I was so touched. My mom taught in a very low income school and every year would go to the dollar store and pick up Christmas presents for all of her students. She knew that many of them didn't get any other gifts for the holiday. She also had stories about how they needed to be careful when constructing standardized tests because there were students who might answer a question like what do you do when you're hungry with go to bed or similar things. It was my first year teaching and the holidays were approaching. A second grade student asked my why Santa visits everyone else's home, but skips hers. On Christmas Eve, my father and I played Santa. We dropped off gifts at their home for each child, with of course the permission of the legal guardian's parents were in jail. Had one young man who had strange round markings on his arms I couldn't figure out. Looked a little bit like vaccine scars. Figured maybe some scarification thing from his culture I didn't know about, live in a melting pot country. We had a pretty good relationship, so I asked him. Nope. Cigarette burns from when he was a baby that had grown up with him. Got a message today about why a student could not come to class yesterday. Sorry I couldn't come to class, there were gunshots right outside my apartment, and I thought I was going to die. The police did come eventually and I had to give a statement. I will get the work from yesterday done today. Thanks. Yeah you get that extension. Taught at an inner city charter school. Had a bright 6th grade girl who started sleeping during my classes, which was not like her. When I asked after school what was up, she told me that her family, her, two younger sisters, and crackhead mom, moved into the homeless shelter and the last time she slept through the night, all their stuff got stolen. Five-year-old girl was crying at the lunch table. I tell her she's going to see her mom soon and it's okay. I don't know her very well at this point. She goes, my mom's in jail. So I quickly go, your dad, then. And she goes he's in jail, too. Her twin sister says, we live with our grandma. I'm about to cry at this point so I ask if they need anything, can I get them anything? They ask for candy. I always carry caramels in my purse because these are safe candies and the kids love them and know I have them. I gave them each a handful of caramels and sat with them until their grandma came an hour later. We colored together. They each saved caramels for their grandma. I'll never forget those two little girls. I work with significant disabilities and autism in an elementary school and have one student who at the end of the day when we say it's time to go home almost always piped up time to go home and to bed. We get out of school at 2 p.m. As I understand it from a coworker who knows someone who worked with the family since they, he has a younger brother, 
where toddler's mom sends them both to bed immediately and, we're guessing here, they lay in bed and watch YouTube on tablets. The younger brother actually has mild leg deformities because he was never allowed out of his crib to walk as a toddler so his legs are bowed. And before someone asks no this is not enough for CPS to do anything. Edit. Bonus time fair warning don't read if you have a weak stomach. Have another student, who also has a brother in another class in the same situation, who comes to school with pants so tight it's like the old Victorian era women needing their maids to put a boot in their back to get their corset closed. First day we comment to mom. But eventually we're like okay they broke AF we're just going to leave the button undone and it's not too bad. Well one day brother eats poop. Literally reaches into his pull up, they are 8 and 10 BTW, and grabs some and chomps down while walking at recess. Happened too fast for us to grab him. So we are pretty alarmed and call mom. Response? I told y'all to keep his pants buttoned. This woman puts pants on them so small that some of the paras physically do not have the strength to button them instead of taking the time to teach her kids a damn thing, they also don't know how to feed themselves. To be clear one of them is doing math. They aren't low functioning enough for these skills to not exist. Neither of them are capable of responding to a verbal question in any way either. Like the one brother can point to an answer or point to what he wants. But neither of them can speak and neither of them know how to shake their head, thumbs up slash down, anything. The sad truth in this demographic is that their disability is rarely what holds them back. It's the parents. Both sets of brothers I spoke about here would likely be in resource classrooms if their parents were worth a damn. Well one of them likely not but the other three for damn sure. The little boy who stays in bed is in first grade and is the highest academically of all our SD A kids first fifth. A student who I built trust with gave me a letter that detailed the horrific experience he had a few years prior of rape and molestation by his family members. I checked with admin, and he was no longer in that environment, and though they didn't know all the details, it was true that he had experienced those things. He just wanted someone else to know I think, and it's something I'll never forget. Edit, thank you to all for the kind messages and awards. I'd love to take this moment to add a little more, this child is one of unfortunately many who have shared similar traumas and experiences. My children's students have been raped, molested, sold for sex, beaten, neglected, sold for drugs and more. I choose to work in high needs slash low income schools because those kids need us the most. And they need your vote. When you vote, please look at the education views of each candidate. Our children are suffering in this country, and our educational system is very poor. Leaking ceilings, rats, chairs that break when you sit in them, etc. and standardized testing is the worst. Schools that do well get funds. Schools that don't get closed down. But when schools are trying to teach children with that type of trauma and coming from homes that are hurting, there's no way to catch up. These kids who suffer so much deserve so much more. And I am one of many teachers who are there for them. We listen. We take on the weight of their pain. We truly love them. We are the teachers you wish you would have had, but most of us leave the profession before you get that chance. So please vote with your heart and with good knowledge on each candidate. There's many votes you'll be casting, and a straight ticket might eliminate a really good candidate for your local schools. And if you can, consider volunteering at your local school post-COVID. Kids need people who care. They need adults who can show them the world isn't as dark as it looks to them. Or donate some supplies at any time during the year. They're sorely needed. It's true about us paying out of pocket. And it's true that we don't make nearly enough money to justify doing that. The world is kinda dark, but the kids I've had the honor of teaching are the light. They truly are better than all of us. I don't want to give out too many details but I've had to fill out four CPS reports in my four years of teaching. Three for students that either confided in me or were had signs that they were being physically abused and one that was sexual abuse from the child's father. It's honestly the worst part of the job, having to hear and see just the awfulness some kids have to go through. Taught summer workshops for teens for a few years, these workshops were based on electives and were rather pricey for students to attend. In complete honesty it was really just bougie summer daycare, I always felt bad for the teens because admin were super neurotic about the education so the curriculum was boring as beep their kids, they want to spend their summers having fun, but rich helicopter parents expect differently. One year I had this absolute monster of a kid, he was 13, rowdy, inappropriate, didn't do any work, constantly throwing things around, etc. Admin tried to boot him but his grandma had begged us to keep him on board. Since they were paying good money, admin agreed under the terms that we just leave him alone. I didn't agree with that at all, no kid should just be ignored, so I didn't. I would always try to encourage the kid's weird jokes and interests and would take him on a walk around the school grounds every day. 
I always gave back as good as I got with the sass, and he got a kick out of it. We explored weird classrooms and kicked around rocks and joked about whatever YouTube videos he was into. We got to talking and he started to trust me and he told me about his life. His parents both worked in the airline industry and as a result they were filthy rich with homes all over North America, but they were never home. During the school year he was mostly alone with them popping in here and there, and in the summers they would fly him to his grandma who lives in our dinky city, and she would care for him for the summers before he would get flown out to beep his parents were staying for a couple days to pretend they were a loving family. Then the cycle would repeat. He was so aggressively lonely, didn't believe anyone cared about him, and was constantly acting out. He would skateboard all over the surrounding cities, for a couple of summers I would run into him in the most weird places and weird times. Think outside beep bars on late Saturday nights, randomly in the huge metro city in the middle of the week, driving by him skateboarding on the side of the highway, etc. He had no one looking after him and no concern for his own well-being and safety. The absolute lack of care or concern for him was heartbreaking, and I tried to do what I could, but ultimately his parents didn't actually break any laws based on his home state rules and regulations and his parents are again filthy rich. He was well provided for and how nice was it that they sent him to this expensive summer workshop. I still think about him now and then, even though it's been years. I hope he's okay. School counselor here. My second year I had a courageous student who suffered from a rare, debilitating disease. She didn't have many friends because she was never in school and always in hospitals. She loved reading though. She brought books with her to the hospital. Unfortunately due to the disease, her eyesight was now deteriorating, and she knew she would eventually go blind. She cried in my office that she would miss her books, and didn't want to be alone in the dark. I couldn't help crying with her. She transitioned to audiobooks on her iPod, this was roughly 14 years ago, a time when middle schoolers didn't have smartphones. A year later she passed away. My hope is she's at peace, reading all the books she wants, with other friends she's met. Edit, thank you for all the awards and comments. If I can pass on anything to all you educators out there, it's this piece of advice I received from a principal many years ago. Be kind to your students. The seven hours they have in school may be the best seven hours of their day. We are never certain what goes on in their homes. I gave a student a hard time for being absent for a week and she told me that she had to stay home to take care of her little brothers and sisters because her parents got extra jobs. And this kid was a very honest person. That was sad. Edit, I've had a number of people call me out as being an insensitive person on this. I should say two things. One, this was 20 years ago, and I feel bad about it, that's why I wrote about it. I learned from it and was hoping to share. Two, I shouldn't have said gave her a hard time because I think that gave people the impression that I was mean. I wasn't. I simply wasn't nearly as sensitive as I could have been, which I regret. I am hungry. How much time until the break? Kid who didn't have food at home. I will quit school and become a criminal because robbing is the only thing I'm good at. Teenager who had a very bad situation at home. Edit for some context. I was a teacher at a public school in a poor region in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and many children had problems at home. Many of them didn't have a father, lived in small houses in the slums etc. The first child didn't have food at home. All teachers knew about it. His mother had a lot of problems and all his siblings were in the same situation, so every day the most important thing for him was to eat, obviously. The teenager apparently had food, but there was a history of violence in his family and he had already committed crimes and he probably felt empowered by it, because he apparently felt bad and stupid in other activities. I wasn't the regular teacher, I was part of a NGO that offered specific attention to students that were behind the others, so every day I would go to their regular class and pick 6 to 10 of them to have special classes, so at the beginning they felt really bad and other students were calling them stupid. At the end of the program many students wanted to join us and our students felt much more confident in general, so it was great, but obviously we didn't solve the hunger problem and this teenager wasn't convinced that he had a future out of crime. I taught a student that had intellectual disabilities. For example, I had a test question that was who is the founder of Buddhism? And the choices were me, the principal, the assistant principal, and the correct answer. He came back from his accommodation room and said I chose you for the last question. And didn't understand why that was bad. Admin had called him in to discuss things with him before and talking to him never led to anything because it was like herding cats. One morning while walking to class he said hey mister, link redacted, this morning my poppy tried to choke me, threw me on the ground, and took my phone. But don't tell anybody, okay? I swear it was like a different kid was talking because it was so focused and direct. Luckily CPS and possibly the police got involved. 
This was a few years ago. This student came into class one day really late and escorted my some official. He threw his bag on the ground and sat in his seat frowning. Turns out, the day before he went home and his foster parents had decided they no longer want him so he went into the care of social services. Everything about this child went downhill from there. I was also in an interview with a mother and her son and she straight up tells us that she's not too concerned about her son as he's not her favorite child. The defeated look on her son's face still tears me up. A student's mother shows up for the first time in almost a year and she's well dressed and looking like someone straight out of a fashion magazine. Had the latest phone, flashy jewelry, overall expensively dressed. The student on the other hand was always shabbily dressed and once went without a blazer for a week because his parents weren't buying him one, we allowed him to wear his sports jersey in the class which is normally not allowed and constantly called the parents to no avail. She showed the slightest possible interest in her child telling us to make him study however we wanted and even hinted hitting him if he didn't behave. A lot of talking and counseling later it turned out that the student was actually from a well-to-do family, but the parents didn't get along well. Father went out on business trips for weeks together where he was having multiple affairs and the mother was doing the same at home. It was an open secret. The child acted weird just to get some attention in school which he wasn't getting at home. I really felt for the child. He was 11 at the time. Not a teacher but a student. I was absent a lot but always handed him an excuse note the next day. One day he came to me with all of them and told me that none of the signatures matched and therefore had to be forged somehow. I told him it was because sometimes my mom was really tired when I get her to sign it. In reality, sometimes she was too high to hold a pen and could barely scratch her name for me. Anyway, by the end of the school year it was very obvious to all my teachers that my mother had a drug problem. And when he took his proof to the office, they informed him that my mother had called in every one of my absences. He apologized the next day. I had a student not come to school for two weeks when he finally showed he was limping and his foot was wrapped up in a large dirty ace bandage. I called him to my office after school that day to check in on him. He told me that he had been in the river fishing for his dinner two weeks ago and slipped on a rock. He cut his foot so badly that he couldn't walk until today to make it to school. I asked about going to the doctor but he hadn't seen his parents in so long that he didn't know how to get to them for help getting to the hospital. I called CPS, got him help, as much as they could offer. We found out he was living in a tent BC the house had been foreclosed on when his parents disappeared. A bunch of teachers chipped in and got him groceries, clothes and started driving him places after that. Today, over two years later, he's working a job and one of our teachers still clothes and feeds him. The student is too prideful to live with anyone and kind of couch hops now. But he's so strong and resilient. He's an incredible human and I think he will change the world one day. A few weeks ago one of my online kids had a band-aid on her left temple so I asked what happened. She said my mom was angry with me and threw a pencil and it stuck in my head, with blood. I had a student who would not acknowledge my presence at all. He was absolutely silent, so I guess what depressed me was his lack of engagement, until I found out why. I had a boy in my English 10 honors, sophomore level, class several years ago. He was quiet and chose to sit with his back to me every single day. I tried to get him to talk to me a few times, but he was so shy and withdrawn I stopped because I didn't want to make him feel more awkward and uncomfortable than he obviously already did. He was a middle-of-the-road student, when he turned in homework it was often half done. His classwork was sloppy and I usually sensed he wasn't paying attention at all. That year, I had a rough group of classes, Student fights breaking out, a girl was beaten up by her boyfriend, and almost killed, a very tall male student threatened me, and my admin wasn't very supportive, so I was hanging on by the skin of my teeth. I allowed the young man to sit quietly in the back of the class because he wasn't causing any problems. When we got to the SA unit, I was completely gobsmacked by his paper. It was the most well-written and analytical essay I had seen in a long time. I wrote him some sort of encouraging comment and started to pay closer attention to him in a very low-key way. Well, fast forward his junior year, I asked if he would join the school newspaper, I was the advisor. He did, and over the course of the next two years, I watched him change and develop into a leader in the class, he came out of his shell and got really involved in the paper, learning how to program and do layouts, etc. When he graduated, he wrote in my yearbook how when he was a sophomore he was being jumped into a gang and it was my encouragement that gave him the courage to get out of that lifestyle. He joined the Navy and is currently in the PhD program at Duke University. I still talk to him once in a while and he's doing amazing, married and happy. Not a teacher but I remember from high school. I told a friend I was proud of him for his work outside of school. 
He teared up and thanked me because he hadn't been told someone was proud of him. I imagine that he couldn't remember another time. Also his dad was a real dick to him, so it's possible he'd never been told that before. That hit me right in the feels and I don't think I'll ever forget that. At the beginning of the year, I have my students write me letters about their life. This year, a student wrote about her dad committing suicide in July. Last year, I had a student's dad die from COVID. That was really sad. Sometimes, I think my kid has a sad home life but they're actually not sad about it. Like I had a homeless girl a few years ago that was always positive and joking. Or this year I had a kid tell me that he didn't mind going into foster care because the woman in his house makes bomb quesadillas. I tutor Chinese children online. Some of them get sent to private boarding schools when they hit middle school. Most do three to four hours of homework a night and have classes Saturday and Sunday. One boy is 11 years old. When I ask what he does for fun, his only response is homework. He doesn't play video games or watch TV or movies. His parents force him to study and read all day, every day. The only time he plays with other children is when they eat lunch or have pee class. I have some other students like this, but they live at home. Some of my kids are taught that the cinema is a waste of time, video games and cartoons are bad and they need to study all weekend to get into a good university. The children can be like zombies. It is difficult sometimes seeing them have no joy. One girl said the highlight of her week was that she didn't get assigned a lot of homework this weekend. My mom is an English teacher and once told me about a child, 13M, whose mother had committed suicide a few years ago. In a creative writing task a few years after it happened the question revolves around finding out a secret. The boy then wrote a descriptive piece about finding a body hanging in his front room lifelessly swinging. Heartbreaking stuff. He had his counselors up and said he just write it from the heart. Poor guy. An animation student of mine was pitching me her idea of someone dancing, and then running when police came to break it up. When I didn't understand why she started running, the student explained that women dancing in public in her country wasn't allowed. I'm in US, she was from a Middle Eastern country, school is online. I felt incredibly bad for her. I had a 10 year old crying and wishing she was dead. Her older brothers at home were being awful to her, bullying and hitting her. She was saying I should just let her go so she could kill herself and then she wouldn't be a bother to us or her brothers anymore. Sat her down with the teacher, a cup of tea, some cookies and talked with her throughout the afternoon. Not much we could do about the brothers, but she left with a smile and came back at school the next day with a smile as well. Now I'm just keeping my eye on her in case things go bad again, but so far so good. Apparently talking to us encouraged her to tell her mother about everything that happened, so at least someone at home also kept an eye out for her. One of my best students in one class showed up late after I had a slew of students rolling in late and I had said there would be consequences for the next ones. I walked over to talk to him and he almost started crying, so we stepped outside and I angled him away from the class and asked what was up. Turns out he had been kicked out of the house, living in his car, his phone had died and that was his alarm. And he felt terrible about being late. I told him that I was so proud of him for making it into class, and I was going to make angry faces and make it look like I was mad so the class didn't think I was going back on my word, but that he was awesome and could take a few minutes to collect himself and join us when he was ready. I think I even waved my arms in the air a bit to ham it up. That dude aced my class. He was amazing. A female university student in China told me her mother tried to sell her for $8 as a baby. I had a student who was acting out more than usual. I sat down with him privately to figure out what was up. Both his parents were out of his life, I think dad had abandoned him and mom was in prison for the long haul, and he lived with his grandpa. He broke down in tears telling me that his grandpa was really sick and dying. He had an aunt that was trying to figure out if she wanted to take him after grandpa passed, or if he was going into foster care with a stranger. It was so much pressure and stress on a sixth grade boy, and he was just devastated. I have heard a lot of tough things from students in my career, way beyond what my sheltered California girl upbringing could have ever led me to imagine. Kids whose parents have told me they don't want to be raising them, kids who have witnessed the death of a sibling, abuse of many sorts, kids bawling their eyes out about their disabilities, a giant tough guy fifth grader missing his dad's cooking and unsure if slash when he'll ever be out of jail to cook for the family again, it's just a lot. It's changed everything about my life, including how I vote. But that one little boy will always stick with me. I wonder often how he's doing. Edit please don't read if animal cruelty is a trigger. My mom was a teacher. There was a girl in the class must have been I think a year one student. They could tell she came from a less than ideal situation. 
Anyway she had just gotten a new kitten and was very excited. A few days later when they asked her how her kitten was going, she said they don't have it anymore because her dad got angry and threw it at the wall. Broke my heart to this day. To further answer a lot of the comments. This story was told to me by my mom after the fact that she was a casual teacher at this school, and she told me this story about 10 years ago. I don't know if anyone reported it to the police, but I doubt anything would have been done because in Australia to the best of my knowledge and it could be better now but you basically have to have a situation where it's the most extreme case of child neglect before Doc steps in. Edit, trigger warning, death. My daddy hurt my mommy real bad and. Now I can't see them again. Do you know where, little brother, is? It was a double murder-suicide. Her mother tried to shield her son with her body and was stabbed by the drunk father multiple times before he killed the boy and then slit his own throat. The room was supposedly a splatter gore fest. The bodies were discovered when a neighbor dropped the little girl off at home. The girl never saw the bodies, luckily enough, that was the poor neighbor, and she was sent to school the next day to have a sense of normalcy while her uncle dealt with everything. It was the fifth year in succession where a student died a violent death in that school, thrice from the same grade, Irk. Everyone was traumatized. I changed careers. I haven't used a fork and a knife in ages. I worked at a group home for kids removed from their parents' care. The kid was completely raised by the TV and was 10 years old eating all his meals with his hands BC he never ate with other people. May your day be filled with joy and happiness. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more quality content every day.